safety, most of us think about mechanical problems and security issues, but there is a possible health risk airline crew members call a stinky little secret. That's right. Chief Investigator Darcy Spears looks at the problem that has many in the industry holding their breath. Crew members work to keep you safe and comfortable when you fly, but there's a secret they want you to know about the air you breathe. Flight attendants and pilots call it the dirty sock smell, but don't let the silly sound of that fool you. But the smell kept getting intense and intense where so I'd be lightheaded and wanting to throw up. A flight attendant claims a fume event sent him to the emergency room last summer, recovering his face and calling him Andrew because he's afraid he'll be fired for speaking out. For almost like 15 minutes, like the smell just kept getting stronger and it, it didn't go away. That's when I got, felt extremely sick, lightheaded, and it was like, hard to breathe. Andrew wasn't the only one with a serious reaction. My other flight attendant next to me asked, I said, is this that smell that everyone's been talking about? Everyone called it the dirty sock smell. According to industry insiders, the source of that foul stench comes from how airplanes are designed. The air in an airplane comes from bleed air. Fresh air goes into the jet engine and some bleeds off, mixes with recycled cabin air and gets pumped back inside. When a gasket leaks, fumes from hydraulic fluids, oils or de-icing agents can enter the system. The engine oils contain neurotoxic additives called... Judith Anderson is with the Association of Flight Attendants. Attendance. The union represents nearly 50,000 employees at 20 different airlines. And also engine oil fumes contain a very complex mixture of chemicals that can include carbon monoxide. She says the union is tracking thousands of cases involving several airlines. Symptoms of hypoxia, you know, headache, dizziness, feeling faint, um, confusion, um, sometimes incapacitation, which is obviously an issue for flight safety and security. When Andrew's plane landed and the flight attendant's symptoms persisted, they were sent to the emergency room. I had a high level of carbon dioxide detected in my blood. Judith says the industry has known about the problem since the 1950s, and she says the solution is elementary. My 11 year old can recognize that it doesn't make sense to compress air in an engine that can leak oil and feed that air to people in an enclosed space without putting a filter on board. As simple as that sounds, the stink about dirty sock smell is wafting into the courtroom. In an ongoing lawsuit, a group of flight attendants is suing Boeing, claiming their health suffered from a fume event on an Alaska Airlines flight. We reached out to airplane manufacturer Boeing. They declined our request for an interview, instead sending a statement which says in part that while a number of advocacy groups claim bleed air could be a health risk, Boeing has not changed its position that cabin air is safe to breathe. Even so, Boeing's new Dreamliner 787 doesn't use bleed air at all. Instead, air is generated by compressors, but that's the only plane in the sky using that system. Flight attendant Andrew is now plagued by a nagging cough and has to use an inhaler, causing him to worry more about travelers like you. I was concerned if someone got sick, that they don't know why they got sick. My first responsibility is the safety and security of my passengers. Airlines for America represents the airline industry. They sent a statement which says in part, incidents of this kind are atypical and infrequent, and studies show cabin air meets or exceeds health and safety standards. We also reached out to Airbus, which points to research suggesting while neuroactive chemicals are present, the concentration is too low to be of concern. We have the link to those studies and full statements from Boeing and some airline carriers on our website at ktnv.com. Darcy Spears, 13 Action News.